the king spoke to Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, and told him to bring certain children, who were well-favored, skillful, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science. The prince of the eunuchs threatened Daniel with death if he did not endanger his head to the king. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah besought Melzar to prove them ten days, and then compare their countenances to the children who ate the portion of the king's meat. Melzar gave them pulse to eat and water to drink. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams that troubled his spirit, and his sleep broke from him. He commanded the magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to come and show him his dreams, and they came and stood before the king. The king said to the Chaldeans that if they did not tell him their dream, they would be cut in pieces and their houses made into a dunghill. The king answered that he would gain the time if the woman would tell him her dream, but if she did not, he would send her away. The Chaldeans answered that there was no man upon earth that could show the king's matter, and that only the gods could do so. The king was angry and furious and ordered all the wise men of Babylon to be slain. Daniel answered the king's captain with counsel and wisdom and requested time to show the king the interpretation. Daniel blessed God for his wisdom and might, and for changing the times and the seasons, removing kings, and setting up kings, and giving wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the understanding. Daniel went to Ariok, who was ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon, and said he would show the king the interpretation. Daniel answered the king that he could not reveal the secret to him, but that there was a God in heaven that revealed secrets and made known to the king what would happen in the latter days. The king saw a great image, whose brightness was excellent, and whose form was terrible. A stone was cut out without hands, and the image was broken to pieces, and the stone became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. The God of heaven gave the king a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory, and made him ruler over all the children of men, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. The dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure, because the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. Daniel was worshipped by Nebuchadnezzar, who said that his God was a God of gods, a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets. The herald cried aloud to the people, nations, and languages, to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Every man that hears music must worship the golden image or be cast into a burning fiery furnace. If you do not worship the image of God, you will be cast into a burning fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king that they would not serve his gods or worship his golden image if they were not delivered from the burning fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and commanded to heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. The flame of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished to see four men walking in the midst of the fire, and the fourth was even dressed like the Son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the burning fiery furnace unscathed, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors were amazed. Nebuchadnezzar blessed the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for delivering his servants. The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Nebuchadnezzar the king addressed all people, nations, and languages, and showed them the signs and wonders that the high god had wrought toward him. Nebuchadnezzar saw a dream that made him afraid, so he brought in all the wise men of Babylon to make known the interpretation of the dream. But none of them could, until Daniel came in, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. A tree grew in the midst of the earth, and was strong and reached to the heavens. Its leaves were fair and its fruit was much, and all flesh was fed by it. A watcher and an holy one came down from heaven and said to cut down the tree and leave the stump in the earth, but let his heart be changed into a beast's heart. The watchers and holy ones demand that the living know that the Most High rules over the kingdom of men. Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was troubled by a dream that was given to him by the king. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, and whose height reached unto the heavens, and whose sight was to all the earth, is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong. The king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying to hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field. King Nebuchadnezzar was walking in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon when a voice from heaven told him the kingdom was departed from him and he would be driven from men and live with the beasts of the field. 
Nebuchadnezzar lifted up his eyes to heaven and praised the Most High, and praised and honored the King that liveth forever. Belshazzar made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. He commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels that his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem. The king and his princes drank wine in golden vessels and praised the gods of gold, silver, brass, iron, wood, and stone. The king cried out to the wise men of Babylon and said that whoever could interpret this writing would be the third ruler. The queen came to the king and said, O king, live forever, let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed, there is a man in thy kingdom, whose spirit is of the holy gods. Daniel was brought before the king, who said that he had the spirit of the gods and excellent wisdom. The wise men and astrologers could not interpret the writing, so the king called a man who could make interpretations and dissolve doubts. The Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, majesty, glory, and honor, but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him. Belshazzar's kingdom was divided and given to the Medes and Persians because he had lifted up his heart against the Lord of heaven and praised the gods of silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. Belshazzar clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold around his neck, and made him the third ruler in the kingdom. Darius set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, and three presidents, Daniel was preferred above them all because of his excellent spirit, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The presidents and princes could find no occasion against Daniel. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, and the princes, the counselors, and the captains, consulted together to make a firm decree. The king signed the writing and the decree. The king's decree was that every man who asked a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of the king, would be cast into the den of lions. Daniel, however, made his petition three times a day. The king commanded that Daniel be cast into the den of lions, and sealed the mouth of the den with a stone. The king arose early in the morning and went to the den of lions, where he cried with a lamentable voice to Daniel. Daniel answered that his God had sent an angel to deliver him from the lions. The lions had the mastery of those men who accused Daniel, and broke all their bones in pieces. King Darius wrote to all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, saying that they should tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, because he had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Daniel saw four great beasts come up from the sea, the first was like a lion with eagle's wings, and it had a man's heart. A second beast, like to a bear, raised itself on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was given dominion. I saw a fourth beast in the night visions, and it had great iron teeth, and ten horns. One of its horns had eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. The thrones were cast down, the Ancient of Days sat, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, the judgment was set, and the books were opened, and the beast was slain. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. The Son of Man was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. Daniel was grieved in his spirit and had visions that troubled him. One of the witnesses told him the truth. The fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, was exceeding dreadful, had teeth of iron and nails of brass, and stamped the residue with his feet. It made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints. The judgment shall sit, and they shall take away the dominion of the wicked, and the kingdom and dominion under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Daniel saw a ram in a vision in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar that had two horns and was pushing westward, northward, and southward. No beasts could stand before him, and he became great. And he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and struck down a ram with two horns. There was no power in the ram to stand against him. The goat waxed very great, and the horn was broken, and four notable ones came up toward the four winds of heaven. One of them waxed exceedingly great, and cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground. Daniel saw a vision of a man standing before him, and heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai calling for Gabriel to make this man to understand the vision. Gabriel came near Daniel, and said, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in the power of the first king. A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up in the latter time of their kingdom, and his power shall be mighty, 
but not by his own power. Daniel fainted and was sick certain days, but rose up and did the king's business, and was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. I set my face unto the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications, with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes, and made my confession to him, saying that I had sinned, committed iniquity, done wickedly, and rebelled against him. The Lord has given Judah and Jerusalem confusion of faces, because they have trespassed against the Lord. 16 O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, turn away thy anger and thy fury from thy city Jerusalem. While praying, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Seven weeks and three score and two weeks after the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Daniel was mourning three full weeks when he saw a man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of uffas. His body was like the barrel, his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. Daniel alone saw the vision, and there remained no strength in him. When he heard the voice of his words, he fell into a deep sleep on his face, and was touched by a hand that set him upon his knees and upon the palms of his hands. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. After he spoke to me, I became dumb and then was strengthened by a man. In the first year of Darius the Mede, Daniel stood to confirm and strengthen him, and now he will show the truth. A mighty king shall stand up in Persia, and his kingdom shall be broken, and divided toward the four winds of heaven. The king's daughter of the south will join the king of the north, but she will lose the power of the arm, and the king of the north will be overthrown. But a man will rise up from her roots and become king. The king of the south will return to his own land, but his sons will gather a multitude of great forces. The king of the south will be moved with choler and will fight with the king of the north, but will lose the battle. The king of the north will return with a great army and riches, and many will stand up against the king of the south. 16 Whoever comes against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. He shall stand in the glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. A vile person will come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries, but will be overthrown by the armies of a flood. 24 He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province, and scatter among them the prey, spoil, and riches. The king of the south will be stirred up to battle with a great army, but will not stand. At the time appointed, Jacob's ships would come against Kittim, and he would be grieved, and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. The wise among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil, many days. In his estate, he shall honor the god of forces, and a strange god, whom he shall increase with glory, and divide the land for gain. The king of the south will push at the king of the north, and the king of the north will come against the king of the south like a whirlwind, and the king of the north will enter into the countries and overturn them, but Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon will escape. At the end of time, Michael, the great prince, will stand up for the children of thy people, and many people will awaken, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Daniel looked and saw two men standing by the river, and one of them asked the man clothed in linen how long it would be until the end of these wonders. From the time the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate is set up, there will be a thousand two hundred and ninety days.